Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. Uh, what we'll be focusing in on this episode is specifically um, how to utilize this beautiful thing right here. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, this is Evernote. Um, and this is my Evernote account right now. Um, and basically what I want to show you in this kind of video tutorial thing is a way that I organize my Evernote. And I think it's a very structured way of organizing my Evernote. And I think that it can be applicable to almost everyone's situation, you know, no matter, uh, you know, no, no matter who you are or what job role you do, um, or even if you're using it for your personal brand, whatever, I think it really does have the ability to span across different things. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to jump in and going to show you how I structure my uh, folders, stacks, things like that, sorry, notebooks. Um, and, you know, you can take this away, you can use it as a resource to restack and reorganize really sorry, it's quite hot here actually, um, actually reorganize your entire Evernote folders. So let's jump in while we're here. Um, so as you can see, um, I've just scrolled back a few days uh, just to kind of get some clarity on the notes. I don't want to share too much. Um, but as you can see over here, if you're not an Evernote user, what you can do is, uh, this is a web version, by the way, um, you can access the web uh, version just for going to evernote.com um, and signing in there. Um, but basically what I've got here, I use the web version the most, mainly because I have a Chrome base. This here is a Chrome base. Um, I have a Chromebook and I have an iPhone and an Android. So my kind of structure is specifically towards Chrome devices or mobile. So I'm very limited to getting access to uh, Mac or Windows. Uh, both really good, uh, actual really good versions. Um, but here we're going to go through on the web because I think it's probably the most basic place. And, you know, if you're using Evernote, um, you can jump in here, whatever. So uh, what I'm doing here is, um, as you can see on the left-hand side over on the notebooks, um, here are all my personal notebooks. And as you can see, uh, I'm just going to break them down um, for a second before we jump in. Um, I've got four key stacks, right? And those four key stacks are projects, areas, resources, and archives, right? Now, I found this, I think I found this through a workflow um, tutorial, um, and it was quite a while ago, so I'm not too sure on who actually uh, did the seminar. Um, but he said this, he said, relate this to any sort of uh, folder system that you have. Um, and I actually really like it. I've been using it for around about two years now, and I find it really useful. So what it, what the presence and idea is, is you've got projects at the top, and your projects are anything that lasts between one month and 12 months. Okay, so that's one month and one year, essentially. Any project that's going to be inside that kind of bubble, right? It might be inside your workplace. You know, it might be um, specific to a period of time. So anything that's going to last you that uh, one month, 12 uh, month bubble. The next thing is areas. And areas are basically anything that's going to, you know, consistently going to last you between one year and three years, right? So it's anything between that time period uh, and that you can get to. So the reason why these two are first is because projects, obviously, you're going to be most active on the one to 12 months. And then two, you're going to be fairly active in this folder. You're going to be jumping in. So that's why they're hierarchy like that. Number three is uh, resources. And resources is basically, you know, right, so I need a template for something. I need a document. I need something relevant. So I'm going to jump in and grab that. So it's resources relevant to completing something potentially in your areas or projects um, or any resources that you have that you wanted to keep for resources, not for uh, later or any other project in the distant future. The reason why I say that is because number four, archives, is actually where you store all of your projects that are uh, that are completed. So let's say I finish a project after 12 months, and it doesn't have a place in areas in that one to three years. Um, so an example of that is I used to actually uh, run a cub group, cub group sorry, um, and that's scouting. It's just a bunch of children. They come together and they learn about walking and stuff like that. It's, it's a really fantastic thing. Um, but basically, I finished that project. Um, that was a project for me. And I had it in projects for quite a while because I knew it wasn't going to last over 12 months, uh, but it wasn't going to, it was over one month. So what I did with that is as soon as I finished it, you know, there might be, you know, two years down the line from today or last year, someone could call me up and go, I need this bit of information. And, you know, having that bit of information relevant 
at that period of time uh, might be quite useful for you. You know, you might need the contacts in the future. So what, I, what you do with these kind of projects or areas that die or come to die um, is if they're not resources, if they're not, you know, the hardcore resources that you're going to use for later, bring them down into archives. And from here, you really do get the relevance you need um, because you can come back to them whenever you want and they're not really dead. Um, and they're there if you ever need them. You know, it might be you need an email in a year or um, you might need some sort of document within those things um, that's relevant to a one-off task versus being recurring like resources. So I hope you understand that. And as you can see here, I've got four other ones. Um, I do apologize. Um, because I have Evernote and Inbox. They're both my inboxes at the moment. But for some reason in the last couple of weeks, Evernote's added a notebook called Evernote um, as a default notebook. So all my inbox stuff goes to here now. Um, so that's my inbox. Uh, inbox isn't really my inbox anymore. Um, and then I've added travel info uh, on the way home the other day, um, just because I was, you know, and, I, and, and that's where the daily or weekly review comes in for you, because you can go in, and tweak all that stuff. And then just down here is a shared one um, that someone sent me an invite to that I haven't quite ordered yet. So I'm just gonna jump in quickly and show you what kind of stuff I've got in mind. So at the moment, uh, my my one, my actually one to 12 month goals uh, and projects are planning and YouTube videos, writing articles, because I know they're gonna last that period of time. But for example, in my areas, I've got placement preparation because I'm actually on placement for a whole year, maybe over a year. Um, fitness, which is quite consistent, uh, life targets, that's me progressing and personal growth, medium articles, because I actually know that I'm going to be posting on medium for longer than a year, uh, productivity coaching, I'm doing it now, <laughs> um, and flash sticks, which I, which is a location I work at, and, and, and then over in resources, um, relevance is, you know, student finance, um, you know, I might actually need to bring that down to archives. But I've got things like my business course, which has all the notes. Um, I have health and information, financing, electrical, you know, all this kind of information that I need to go to for a specific time, but don't actually need to be in areas or projects. And in my archive, as you can see, I've got all my kind of old projects, old modules from class, uh, club planning, club cub planning, as I said, um, and things like that, old companies that I worked at. And I can still go in now and find all the information I was utilizing for that period of time. So, guys, um, the way to do this is actually what you need to do is um, probably best to do it on either Android or iPhone or, or whether you use the, uh, uh, not the web one, because I don't think you have as much F, um, editing abilities on that. But what you can do is go on the uh, iPhone application or the Android application and start tweaking them. So make notebooks that clarify the name. So be really clear on what the actual notebook is about. Then once you've got these, start actually, sorry about my thing, um, get a, like a, a book, whatever you've got, and actually start listing out which thing you, which notebook you think belongs in each stack. And a stack is basically a bunch of notebooks put together. It's a folder for your notebooks. So what you do on the uh, iPhone or whatever version, um, you actually just take all of the notebooks that are relevant to that stack and you use numbers before. So one, colon, space, projects, because that means it will prioritize to the top. Uh, and same with two, colon. Um, and then what you can do here is you can actually just start putting these in. You know, you can change them around or yeah, I'm, I'm forever changing them. And in my review process, when I go, okay, um, this area is no longer a project. That, sorry, this project is no longer an area. Say that again. No, okay, say so, <laughs> example, sorry. Um, okay, so let's say I've got a project, right? Um, that's like, and then let's say I've got a promotion. Uh, this is all contextual. Um, and I went, oh, okay. Um, this is now longer than a year. I can bring that over to areas, right? And you can do the same, you know, areas, it might go, okay, I've got less than a year to go on this thing. Now it's a project, right? So what you can do with this is you can start chopping and changing when you go through your review periods or whenever you just, you know, you do it in real time on the way home, you just jump in and putting them in different stacks. So I actually find this really useful because I can access all the information I need at relevant periods of time. Um, and it's really fast. Uh, it's a good way to organize. And then obviously when you've got core notes that you think you're gonna be utilizing throughout your day, um, jump over to uh, the shortcuts and just star them. Um, I've got some really relevant ones there. Um, you know, morning routine, media schedules um, that I've got here, you know, what I'm actually gonna post out. I'm meant to be posting this one out on uh, on Saturday, but I'm just doing a little uh, kind of midweek one to keep everyone 
not can keep everyone happy. I really love the community, but I really would just want to see if I can do a couple of these screenshot ones over the week uh, periods. But yeah, anyway, going back to this, um, I really hope, I really want you to tweet at me um, at Francesco D underscore A L E S. Uh, and whether you implement this, I wrote a Medium article, uh, Evernote has been sharing it out, it's been getting quite a lot of attention, which I really appreciate everyone for sharing. Um, but basically, the aim of that is to really, is to really just let you test it out, because for a basic Evernote user, you want to go in and you want to be able to have this functionality, this structure, and I think this structure is applicable to anything. I think this structure is a very simple one and one that can add huge value to kind of productivity system. Um, and, you know, as things come in, you can start um, putting them in the right folder. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm jumbling now. Jumbling? I'm murmuring. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, just uh, give it a try and let me know what you think, uh, whether it's in the comments or on Twitter. I really love to know your thoughts, guys. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be doing some more videos, uh, going to be pushing some stuff out there. So uh, I'll catch everyone soon. And uh, as per usual, have a great week and make sure to keep productive. Thanks very much. I'm going to awkwardly go over to the thing and click out. So thank you. I'll see you soon, everyone.